Hello and welcome to one more tutorial on the Arduino Uno. In this tutorial, we'll be talking about pin change interrupts in a little bit more detail. As we know, any interrupt involves certain interpreters and registers. So this brief video will be focusing on the interrupt vectors and registers associated with the pin change interrupt. So the pin change interrupt is the same like any other interrupt. Basically, it stops the microcontroller from going into this repeated void loop and it tells it to do something else, something that's more important. And as we have seen earlier in our video on timer interrupts, the interrupt basically enables the microcontroller to multitask. The advantage of pin change interrupts is that it enables the Arduino Uno to have an interrupt on almost every input pin. And this makes the utilization of the microcontroller to be extremely flexible. Now here's a sample code which we will be studying in detail in another video, the code to blink an LED. Now as you can see here, there are a few registers and bits that we are trying to set. So this PCICR, this is a register which we are going to manipulate and we are manipulating it by left shifting and setting this particular bit as one. Now we understand what exactly these mean. So here are our three pin change interrupts PCINT0, 1 and 2. So 0 corresponds to port B, 1 corresponds to port C and 2 corresponds to port D. And in PCICR, the pin change interrupt control register, the bits PCIC0 corresponds to port D. So what we are doing here is that we are enabling the pin change interrupt on port B. Now what do we mean by port B, port C and port D? So that's clear in this photo. As you can see that port D refers to this set of pins. Port B, the bit which we have enabled just now, pertains to the pins from 8 to 13. And port C pertains to the pins from A0 to A5. So all input pins of the Arduino are covered. There is one more register called the pin change mask register. As you can see here in the code, the pin change mask register is first set to 0 and the PCINT 0 bit is set to 1. So what we are trying to do here is that we are enabling the pin change interrupt first on port B and then by setting this mask correctly we are enabling the interrupt to work here and this basically pertains to pin 8 on the Arduino. So instead of writing the code for pin 8, what we are doing is that by setting these two bits, we are enabling the pin change on pin 8. The beauty of pin change interrupts is that by just these two lines of code, you can set the interrupt to watch any of the input pins of the Arduino and this makes the code really really flexible. Similar to the pin change mask register 0, we have pin change mask register 1 and pin change mask register 2 and obviously they would correspond to port B, C and D. So here is the example code of an interrupt vector and here you can see that there are a few new terms. Uh, there is a flag called allow equal to true. So what we are doing here is that when a switch is pressed, the voltage on the switch uh, is going to change and this would go to a pin on which we have enabled a pin change interrupt. Now when the switch is pressed, the value would change and when the switch returns back to its original state, again its value would change. So the pin change interrupt actually detects a change and it doesn't distinguish between rising and falling edges. And we may not want the interrupt to be triggering in both directions, we may want it to trigger in only one direction. And to uh, make that possible, what we are trying to say is that when the pin goes to zero, then end the interrupt is allowed. So we are using allow here as a flag. And as soon as the pin value goes to zero, allow is set to false. So basically when the value goes from high to low, the interrupt would be triggered 
but when it goes from low to high the flag has been reset to false and this means that when it goes from low to high the interrupt would not get triggered so the interrupt would trigger in only one way so we would need to use the small trick by using a flag to track a state to make sure that the pin change interrupt is sensitive only in one direction of course there may be applications when you want it to be um, flexible in both directions then there is this interesting function bit read which we have spoken about so what this does is that this is just one way another way instead of using digital read we are using another way to get the value at a particular pin so pin b basically this corresponds to all values of port b so port b as you can see is here pertaining from 8 to 13 and what does bit read 0 does is it gets the first bit or the rightmost bit of uh, port b and that basically corresponds to the value of pin 8. So there is a brief primer on the pin change interrupts and I hope you like this video and we will be following this up with a more detailed experiments on pin change interrupts. If you do like this channel and this content, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you.